Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of I'm That Geek Show, the only show in the world so far that puts you face to face with experts in real time so you too get advice and some insights about your own relationships, your own business, your own health, uh, and your own brand. And today we are talking with the big cheese at uh, Loudmouth, Mr. Mark Ensign. How are you, Mark? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So, um, so guys, first of all, if you want to join us, the link is right here, right here on the bottom. I'm thatgeek.com forward slash live. This is where you'll be able to click a button, join us in the conversation and get personalized advice about your own brand. And what I really, really like about today's talk is that Mark is going to take us a little bit beyond personal branding into being chosen. And this is a near and dear topic to my heart because I lived it for like five years until I realized I was building my home on rented properties <laughs> Then it all disappeared. And so we'll dive into that. But before we do, let me tell you just a little bit about who Mark is. So Mark's stories begin back when he was a kid and he wanted to change the world, like so many of us, right? Well, hopefully most of us. <laughs> I know a few people who woke up and were like, yeah, this is fine, <laughs> right? And upon realizing that it might take a little longer than anticipated, he got sidetracked and found himself playing bass on Broadway with the Tony Award winning show, Rent, which I love. <laughs> uh, he was completely unqualified, his words, not mine. But he had a gift for marketing himself and the, red, the rest is Broadway history. So fast forward a bunch of years and Mark now is the big cheese at Loudmouth. Loudmouth, what is it, Loudmouth? How's that? <laughs> Personal branding agency that specializing in making some of the world's most inspiring speakers, authors, coaches and entrepreneurs impossible to ignore. Through their one in 10 initiatives, Mark and his team have a goal of reaching 1 billion people in 10 years through their work and clients. So if you're, if you're watching this right now, they might be one person closer. If you wanna to talk to Mark and see how they can make you also be in, impossible to ignore, this is the show for you. Hop on in. So Mark, I know we talked a little bit right before about the Broadway story. It always comes up. I think it does it come up because people are like, how the hell did you make it to Broadway? <laughs> yeah, you know, well, first of all, it's a really cool story, uh, but also it's it's just one of those things that is different, right? It's yeah. it, um, it's not everybody that, that, you know, oh, and by the way, I used to play on Broadway. Um, and it also begs the question like, well, what are you doing here? Like if, <laughs> if you were on Broadway, how did you get from Broadway to here? So, so there's, it, it, it just begs a lot of different questions. And so, um, I'm not going to ask because guys, Mark is famous in his industry. If you're already, uh, if you're watching this, you probably already know him. If you don't, um, you will tell you in just a second how to get in contact with Mark, but you can find that story everywhere. Just Google it, right, Mark? Like everybody asks you about <laughs> <Yeah>. the question. <laughs> I have told that story more times than I, uh, that I care to mention, but yeah, and, and it is a really good story it is, and it really kind of bridges that gap of, you know, that being that kid that wants to change the world to uh, being the guy that, that is helping other people kind of reach that impossible dream. Yes, and I love that you said that because a lot of people are saying, you know, um, you know, I got a coach, I got a coach, I got a coach, but they, there's a difference between having a coach who knows how to do something and having a coach who knows how to get you to do the same thing, right? Sure. So is uh, that, yeah, uh, is that something like, you know, that you've experienced along the way where people are, uh, I've been through branding before, I've heard this stuff before, I've tried this, you know, stuff doesn't work for me. Yeah, well, well, the whole concept of, of being this chosen personal brand kind of stems from this idea that whenever we talk about personal branding, we're talking about standing out in a crowd or becoming known in your industry or becoming the recognized expert and all these like fluffy terms that don't actually mean anything. You can dress up like a clown and show up to a networking event and you're going to stand out. Like people are going to know who you are. You're going <laughs> to be recognized. It's going to be hard to... Uh, it's, it's just going to be hard to miss you. Uh, however, that doesn't actually mean that you're going to get the gig. In fact, you're, you're not going to, <laughs> if, <laughs> you know, unless it's a clown conference or something like that. 
Um, and so, uh, you know, when, when we measure success in like how many people know you, how many people like you, or how many, you know, and, and these, these false metrics of significance, uh, we're missing something. We're missing the boat. There's meanwhile, there's somebody that you may not, that maybe isn't quite as popular. Maybe they don't have as many uh, likes or maybe they don't have as many followers and yet they're getting all the gigs. Like whenever anybody thinks of that industry, they're the person that gets the call. Right. And that to me is what personal branding is. It's not about this feel good, um, you know, false sense of significance. It's the, it's the person that actually gets the job. And so I love it that you say that because I've been fighting a lot with vanity matrix. You know, when Google Plus mm -hmm. came about um, and every I think every other platform has the same thing. When you just sign up to Instagram or LinkedIn or I don't know about Facebook, but they always recommend someone to you. Right. And so those people have millions of followers by default, not because right. they're awesome, not because, you know, they did something amazing, not because they can really engage, but just by default, they're the first one who were suggested. And now they have millions of followers. But like you said, they're not the first choice that comes to mind when someone want to do anything, right? Right, and, and there was there was a story, and, and there were two sides of the story, so so without getting into all the particulars, but there was an Instagram uh, influencer that had about two or two or two and a half million yep. uh, followers on Instagram, and, uh, and, and she was starting a clothing line and wasn't able to sell the bare minimum uh, for, the, to, for the clothing line to be produced. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think it was like 30 or 40 items per, you know, per size or per style or whatever, which ended up coming out to a couple hundred items, maybe tops. And out of 2.5 million followers, wasn't able to sell 200 things. Yep. Um, and and it's it's uh, and it's not that those are fake followers. Like like it's just that they're people that, you know, that a they're not listening, and b they don't see you as being somebody uh, that is that you're they're going to buy from. You know. Right. You know, yeah, it's nice looking at your pictures every now and then. Um, they don't see you as an authority. They don't see you as somebody um, worthy of their their money. A little bit of their time, but definitely not worthy of their money. And and so that's that feel good. You know, hey, I got two point six million, which means nothing. Which yeah. at the end of the day doesn't turn into anything. So, and I love that you brought that story because I use that all the time. I think it was two, oh, okay. two point six and thirty two shirts. She could not sell thirty two shirts. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah exactly. Yeah. All right. And, well, and so, good. right. And so it's interesting because um, we have all these influencer marketing right now. Right. And if you have 5000 followers, then you can charge three hundred dollars or something per post. But people are starting to wake up right now and realize it's vanity numbers. Right. It, it, exactly. That story of that girl. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. It matters the relationship you have with people. So, yeah, and, 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 and I don't know if it's so much vanity numbers as much as it's about like, like gone are the days that you can be uh, that you can uh, show up on the scene as a Kardashian and, uh, you know, and, and, and compile hundreds of millions of followers without really having an enormous amount of talent. Like you just, you know, like, I don't know, I'm just you know, hanging out with my family and now all of a sudden everybody's <laughs> buying stuff from me. Um, it's it's uh, it really kind of requires you know, having a niche, having a focus, having, you know, being able to offer something of value to people beyond, uh, hey, I'm just going to entertain you with a couple pictures of me at the beach every now and then. Exactly. And, and so, and the value is also very hard to deliver when you have YouTube University, right? Because everything you want is already there on YouTube. So how right. do you become, you know, not just another video out there or not just another article or not just another meme? How do you become the chosen one, someone who goes like, hey, if who do you know that can really help me with personal branding? And the automatic response is Mark Ensign. So how do you become that? You have a three step system that you actually walk with all your clients through, right? Sure. So so I, after studying like a lot of really successful personal brands, as well as, um, you know, my history for, for 15 years, I, I ran a marketing agency that worked with a lot of like major, major brands like Nike, American Express, Travel and Leisure Magazine, Callaway Golf, Berkshire Hathaway, and like a lot of those big brands and then bringing that into personal branding uh, and, and, and then just kind of studying some of the people that do it best, the Gary V's of the world. Uh, and and it, what I found was that there are these three different things that, that really kind of define uh, a successful personal brand. And, you know, the first one is uh, you have to have a strong identity. You have to know who you are, what you stand for, um, who you're here to help and uh, what problems that they have and how you solve those problems different from everybody else. 
Why right? Like, like, you know, you got to be crystal clear in that. Like, you can't be the person that like, hey, I, I own a catering company and I, you know, my ideal client is anybody who's hungry. Well, guess what? We're all hungry at some <laughs> point. Like, that doesn't work. Like, you have to have, you have to be specific on, on you know, uh, this is who I'm for. This is who I help. This is what they're struggling with. And this is how I, I solve that problem. And again, the, the key is different from everybody else. You cannot be just another, oh, I do that too. Uh, kind of approach to what it is that that um, that you do. You have to approach it differently from everybody else because otherwise, you know, then otherwise you're you're competing on price. Um, and so the second aspect of okay, wait, uh, wait, let's uh, let's oh, dive yeah. into that a second because that's sure. very interesting because that's I think where most people kind of like uh, stumble on right, uh, and mostly because if you're just starting out and you're watching everybody online, you're going like, wow. This person is saying what I'm saying. This person is saying what I'm saying. How do I differentiate myself? And uh, and I'll give you an example. Gary V and I uh, say, you know, we kind of like really resonate. I really resonate with everything that he's saying, but I'm not Gary V, right? So he has my audience. And if I were just to start out, I'd be like, well, I'll never be Gary V. What do I have to do? Do I have to model him? Do I have to be vulgar? Do I have to be, you know, like massively producing content? Like, how do I get the same audience that he has if both he and I kind of like resonate on the same thing. Sure. So um, the first place I always start when trying to figure out how to differentiate yourself is to figure out what everybody else is saying to be true and seeing that if there's a way that you can prove it to be false. Mm. Uh, right. So, so if everybody is always saying the exact same thing. Everybody's saying, hey, you need a website, you need a website, you need a website. And then you come up and say, well, no, because you know what, if you gave me a blank piece of paper, and I had the right message on that website, I bet I could sell more than you with your $10,000 website and no message. And mm -hmm. so now all of a sudden it's like, hey, wait a minute, that's, that's a, you know, that could potentially be true. Like, let me think about that. You know, we've all bought stuff from, from websites that looked horrible. Uh, we've also not bought, uh, not, not purchased something from websites that looked great. So, mm -hmm. so it's not necessarily just the pixels and the pretty colors. And uh, the logo, there's there's aspect to the messaging, which is such an important role. And you start to see, you start to position things differently. Like, yeah, you know, you you need a website, absolutely. Uh, however, the message is what's going to sell the website. And so you sell people on the message. Oh, you know what? I'll throw the website in for free. Let's just work on your messaging. And now, and now all of a sudden, when you talk to every other web designer on the, you know, that that's out there it changes the conversation for them because they're you know like oh yeah i tried 50 dollars a page for content i'm not looking for content i'm looking for messaging i need to you know i need to make sure that this is right i don't want to overpay for this website and you know like if if this guy is telling me that my current content isn't going to work my current identity isn't going to work then what good is a new website and it just changes everything for uh, for people so um so you have to look at like what everybody else is saying and see it differently and, and this is great because um, that allows you to bring up your own voice, right? And it allows sure. you to, to be who you are because you are looking at the world differently and you can stop with this whole me too stuff, right? Like, we, yeah, I do that too. Or like, yeah, let me be like. And I think this is where a lot of people get stuck is they see successful people or people who are putting ads in front of people and like, ooh, I need to do that. And then they model it and they kind of lose their personality in the process. Right. And and um, and this is exactly what what, uh, you know, what I've done with with like this whole concept of being chosen. Everybody's talking about standing out. There are books about standing out. There's books about becoming known. There's books about uh, being that recognized expert, like all that stuff is, you know, how to get more likes, how to get more people following you. And uh, and now, you know, here I am standing up saying, well, none of that stuff matters unless you're the one that actually gets chosen. And it actually makes sense. And I have the background to prove it because. When I say, you know, showing up to a, a networking event dressed as a clown, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, that's, I'm not making that up. Like, that is an actual fact. I have shown up to networking events dressed up like a giant slice of pizza. I've, I've shown up dressed up as a uh, superhero. I've, I've shown, <laughs> I've gotten thrown out of uh, networking events, uh, you know, because of uh, dressed, I, I met Mark Cuban because I dressed up as a shark uh, and sat in the front row of a, of a conference that he was giving. So, like, I have done everything humanly possible to meet people and it's never, t it, like, I get noticed people like you, it's hard to forget. I got pictures. I, there, I was you know, on the front page of the Tennessee newspaper with Mark Cuban. <laughs> uh, however, none of it turned into actual work. I became, you know, like I was the point and laugh at guy. Yeah. Um, it was hard to take me seriously. Uh, so I did get 
I did get noticed. I got that significance, but it didn't actually mean business. Like it didn't turn into any kind of business. So, so I've been able to change, turn that message around saying like, Hey, look, it's just not enough to, to stand out and to gather the likes and gather all that, that, you know, that data it's, you, you have to actually be the person that, that, you know, answers the phone and gets the job. And yes. And doesn't, don't you find that most of that stuff happens because of the relationship that you would have with someone rather than, um, you know, just being the guy in the shark costume? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely has to do with the relationship, and the relationship starts by positioning yourself in a way where people get you and they like you, right? So, so when you're when you're somebody that's really likable, somebody that they connect with, and they and and they see what you're saying, and they or they read what you're writing, and they understand, um, you know, they feel connected to whatever it is your message, uh, and and you're able to deliver it in a way that they get, um, it builds that human connection. Like we. we you know, there's that that old adage that we uh, we do business with those we know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, we commit to those that we love, and so when you can get somebody to fall in love with you, uh, then all of a sudden they're you know they're uh, you know by your side, helping to share your stuff, buying your product without reading the synopsis on the book. Like like you know, J.K. Rowling doesn't have to do a lot of promotion when she has a new book come out. Right. Uh, she puts a book out, and she's got people that just are just love her. Uh, put her on the New York Times bestseller list without like she didn't have to announce that she has a new book coming out. Yep. Word will get out as soon as it hits the store uh, with no advertising. That's what that's what it means to 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 build that brand that's so powerful uh, that uh, people actually take action and actually do something. They put their money where their mouth is. They they you know where they 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 are committed to you. They're committed to your success. So let's break another myth here because it's so important. Um, a lot of people think that you can become chosen overnight. Right. All you have to do is have the right messaging, have the right look and feel, have a good website, nice over and pff, you're chosen. Um, so let's talk about the time, the patience, <laughs> and the work that goes into becoming J.K. Rowling's. Right. Because she did not wake up one day. She was homeless. Right. And she was broke and all that stuff. It took her years uh, to be to to get to where she is right now, to the point where she doesn't need to announce any books. It's just, you know, people want to come and buy it. So in your experience, what's the timeline? Like how long, you know, people should expect to uh, to put some sweat equity before they can be like, OK, now everybody knows who I am and I, you know, money, you know, contacts and, and business will come to me. Um, I don't think it's a specific timeline as much as it's like because it, 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 it comes down to how much your message resonates with other people as well as what you put into it. Um, you know, she look at the JK Rowling example. Yeah, she was, she was, she lived in her car. She wrote, she started writing Harry Potter on the back of a barf bag. She was a single mother. She was on welfare. She's got this horrendous story. Uh, but it's this amazing story of overcoming. And, and, you know, she was declined by almost every publisher. Someone finally picked her up and the, you know, and then that's, that started it. Now, when she released that first book, there wasn't a line around the, you know, wrapped around the place. Like it took time. It took right. another book, another book, another book and that consistency and that, you know, she was clear about who she was. She was consistent by, you know, constantly writing and putting out great material. Um, her, her work was exceptional. Like it was all these things. It wasn't that she posted it, you know, she was really good at posting some stuff on Facebook and that, you know, <laughs> that turned yeah. into instant fame. It was that it was that clarity in who she is and what she writes about and what her message is. It was that consistency of putting that out there of, of uh, you know, of being clear about it and, and, and continuing that story and the exceptional work that she had put together. Yeah. So but just like, you know, just so everybody understands it's not an overnight thing, right? Like a lot of things that you're seeing there might feel like, oh, I just put up a Web page or a sales page or a webinar or a thing. And all of a sudden, um, J.K. Rowling. Um, right, it takes time for everything. For me in Google Plus, it took about three years, two to three years, um, a for the platform to mature a little bit, and then for people to see. And I was active on it, I think, about four to six hours a day, just because I loved it so much. Right, and um, and so one of the things um, that makes you exceptional is the love that you have for your work. Right, like you cannot be exceptional if you're like, yeah, well, I do this to pay the bills, but really, I want to play the bass. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, and and it's it's um, uh, it, you you know you're getting somewhere when you see other like w when when you feel like quitting and you see other people quitting and you continue to push through. It's when you continue to push through enough times that that things really start happening. If it it's it's never as easy as the first 
you know, couple of things that you do. You have to constantly push towards it. Um, and that's why it's so important. Like when they say, you know, all those the sayings like, you know, if you know, find what you're passionate about, you'll never work a day in your life and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's, I don't know how true it is or how much I believe it, but, but I, I will say that in order to build something, build something like Gary Vee has or J.K. Rowling has or Anthony Robbins has, um, it takes such an enormous amount of effort, like in consistent and, and constant effort and, and not giving up when things are tough that uh, you do have to love what you do because you would do it for free because you're going to be doing it for free for yeah. a little bit of time, <laughs> right. you know, whether, you, <laughs> whether you like it or not. Like it's just, uh, it, you know, you're going to have to invest the time in, in uh, writing a blog that the only person that reads it is is, you know, you and your mom or, yeah. you know, and and uh, doing, you know, some online videos that nobody watches and, and you know, and just putting stuff out there uh, and getting nothing back but crickets because eventually it'll start to catch up. Like it's like the universe is just kind of want to make wants to make sure that you really want this bad <laughs> enough, because uh, if you're willing to give up in 30 days, then, yeah, you probably you probably didn't deserve it anyway. And you know what's interesting? I was talking to a mutual friend of ours, uh, Kingsley, who's running the wealthy CEO program. And he was saying, even in the eyes of the IRS, if you're not making enough profit, if you're not uh, designating your expenses well enough, they will treat your business as a hobby and won't allow you to expense the things that you are, you know, um, wanting to expense as a business. So it's very interesting, like not just in the eyes of the universe and yourself, but really tangibly. There is a difference between running a business and running a hobby. Um, sure, and there's nothing wrong with having a hobby. Just embrace no, it. Not, yeah. If if, if you just want to play on Facebook or um, and and just you know dabble here and there, like all the power to you. Like there's there's no rule here that says that you have to go all in on this thing and work 80 hours a week and become the next Gary V. Right. Um, you get to decide. Like like this is this this whole thing that we're doing is is kind of that choose your own adventure book. Like you get to decide where you want this thing to go. And uh, there's no shame in it either way, but but at least embrace where you're going. Like, be clear about what that outcome is. I love it you say that because that kind of leads me to um, to this, guys. If you want to know where you are right now, there you go. There's uh, an assessment that you can take, and if you want to really know where your brand is, where you're sta- you know, where you're standing before you get started, uh, right there on amdatgeek.com <clears throat> forward slash live, you'll see uh, this. And you can click on it and you can go directly to the assessment. And so let's break it down. I got, what was that, 87, I believe, uh, on the assessment. And it was broken down to three pieces. So let's talk about, like, now that people know where they are, where the brand is, like, okay, this is not a hobby. I want to take it personally, you know, seriously. I want to grow my personal brand. How do I go about that? Um, first step, know where you are. Take that assessment. Um, and then how, let's break that down. Let's break what each part of it means and, um, and how can people, you know, improve on that? Sure. So, so we talked about that first step being your identity and, and that thing that you, uh, you know, uh, being clear about who you are, who you're here to help, how you help them, what the problem is and, and, uh, and just being crystal clear on, 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 on what all that is. Uh, the second step is your visibility. It's it's the ability to be able to now communicate that. Like, how are you going to communicate that identity to the rest of the world? Um, and so that shows up as your presence. How do you carry yourself down to like you know whether your headshots, your dress code, um, it's it's your all your design stuff like your assets, like your logo, your website, your so it's your social media presence and and the network and the channels that you that you show up on. You know, how is it that that the rest of us uh, interpret that message visually? Uh, and so that's your visibility. So you can have this brilliant identity, but if you're not actually packaging it up in a way for people to see and consume, then it really doesn't matter. It doesn't you're not going to you're not going to reach beyond uh, your current audience. So um, so that second step is visibility. So and, hold on. So what was behind Morpheus? Uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> that, that image is ridiculous, by the way. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love it. I love it because both you and I were kind of like getting into the matrix in from different angles. Right. right, right. And that's why you have like my little Trinity hiding behind you. But, um, you know, what, what like, OK, I'm going to become the chosen one. I'm going to become Morpheus. How tell me that story. So, um, well, it, and again, it's, it's, it was kind of came from where the, the, uh, that whole chosen 
the, you know, like that's been the brand for this, for this uh, concept that I, that I've come up with and, and all the studying of, of past personal brands, as well as all the, all the clients that I've worked with both as, as my uh, past agency and my, and my current agency. And, um, and then I just kind of, I, I kind of started the, like the test, for example, uh, is an assessment that I give every single one of my clients before we start working together. So I can kind of gauge where their biggest issues are because, um, one of the problems that we have is that when we focus on, we, we tend to focus on one thing, one or two things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and if you're not focusing on all three, you're leaving too big of a hole, um, which is going to result in a personal brand that just doesn't catch on. That doesn't, it either doesn't reach enough people or it's not profitable enough, or it's, um, you know, or it's hard to find, or it's not clear. Like there are all these other issues that stem from just not, uh, approaching these three different elements. And, uh, and so I've been giving this assessment for years and then until we decided to kind of digitize it and, you know, like, well, let's start seeing what other people think, what, how other people rank. And, and, uh, and we kind of put it out there and it's been this really valuable tool for people to understand where they are, because what we tend to do is, um, you know, if I'm having a slow, if my business is slow right now, well, Facebook really works really well for me. So let me double up my efforts there. Mm -hmm. Well, no, like what's already working on Facebook is great, but maybe the, the whole is that they don't see you as an authority or they don't, they don't understand who you are. They're not, there's not a clear enough identity. And, uh, and so you're, you're ignoring these other two elements of your personal brand to double up on the thing that's already kind of working as best as it can, given the fact that you're ignoring these other two other aspects. So, uh, so this way we give people this assessment. I could see that you're, that you're weak in your identity or you're weak in, like you don't have a solid story or your website is lacking and it's not converting or you know, whatever, whatever elements are missing or are weak. And then from there we can fix those elements so we can get a quick return on your, on your brand. Because like you said, branding takes seemingly forever. And, um, but this is a way if we can plug some of those holes, we can get a result much quicker and, uh, and, and kind of get right to, to work fixing the things that are broken first and then growing the brand. And so when someone's starting out, um, and I know we, we're kind of like weaving in between, you know, the three elements of a personal brand and being chosen. But when someone starts out, uh, many times, you know, they kind of know what they want to do, but not really. And I always tell this story of like, you know, I just wanted to sell cupcakes. But now I have to have a website and I have to have messaging and I have to have a personal brand and I have to have email funnels and Instagram stuff and a photographer and a webinar. All I wanted to do is sell cupcakes, <laughs> right? Like life is becoming so complicated lately that you can't just be, here's my good cupcakes. Can you have them? <laughs> like, <laughs> right, right. right. And so let's say someone really just want to start having, you know, I just want to sell cupcakes. Um, what would be, you know, and they don't like everybody can have cupcakes, right? Like maybe you have a preference of vanilla or chocolate, but everybody loves cupcakes. So your niche is very, I don't know, it's pretty wide, right? And, um, and now you need to look at like visibility and authority and all that stuff. So can personal branding, you know, might be, how would I phrase that? Uh, does everybody who's starting a business online uh, need to have personal branding? Um, it's, it's kind of a tricky question because whether they need to or not is almost irrelevant because they all have one. So mm -hmm. whether you like it or not, you have a personal brand. Now you may not like it <laughs> or, or, you know, or, uh, but the fact is like a personal brand, like, like branding is really determined by everybody else. Like you get to decide what my brand, uh, look, you know, uh, yeah. means to you. Uh, my job is to, is to control the conversation as best I can. I can give you certain information and I can position myself uh, a certain way. So you'll go, Hey, he's really nice or he's funny or he's got this or he's very funny. smart when it comes to this, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to this, that, or, you know, and, and I can kind of guide that conversation. But at the end of the day, you're going to decide what it all means. And, and, uh, you know, so, so if you do a search and, uh, you know, for me or for somebody else and, and all you can find on me is this uh, is, a, is some pictures of me at, at, at a frat party doing a keg stand back in college. Uh, you're going to you know, like that's going to define how you see me. You're gonna you're gonna say, well, this is all I have. All I have are these ridiculous pictures. And so you're gonna fill in the gaps. Well, he likes to party, obviously, and maybe he drinks too much. And you know, you're gonna fill in all the missing pieces. Right. But if I put a lot of good stuff out there, and if I um, uh, you know, if I'm careful and I'm clear about who I am and, uh, and that's what I communicate to the rest of the world, 
then when you do that search for me, you're going to find stuff like, wow, okay, yeah, he's really good at this. And this is what he does. And he, you know, he's good with his family. And, and you know, and you're going to fill in, uh, you know, the much smaller gaps than if I just have a couple of pictures from college. So um, does the cupcake person need a, a personal brand? They already have one. So now it's a matter of um, what are their goals? What do they want this cupcake business to look like? Do they want to be the celebrity cupcake? cupcake preneur, uh, you know, where they're, they're on the TV shows and they're, uh, you know, they have a cookbook out and like, and, and, and they're, they're known for their cupcakes or do they want to be like the local bakery where it's the mom and pop where, you know, all the, all the, you know, nice people from around the box stop in on their way to, uh, on their way to work or on their way home and pick up some cupcakes. And they're really, they're a celebrity within that little community. Um, either way it's, they need that brand it's just a matter of what tools are, are best to get get it out to everybody else. You know, if, if you just want to be the local celebrity, a nice billboard in the center of town is, you know, is almost all you need, you know, or, or you know, or just a uh, just prime location. And, you know, just make sure that you're going to, uh, you know, going to local networking events and shaking hands and kissing babies. And maybe that's <laughs> enough. I don't know. Uh, but if you want to be this big celebrity uh, cupcake, you know, person with with the, the cookbook and everything else, then yeah, you need a presence online. You need a website. You need uh, all, all those things because that's where we're looking for you. That's where that's where the people are. And it's so true. You know, the the internet has matured uh, to the point where we kind of like expect people to a be online and b uh, to to look good. Right, because if you look at a website that's kind of look like 2008, right, that's the impression that you get of, of of people. It's like, okay, well, they're too old. What do they know about? And it, something happened to me. Like someone reached out to me from LinkedIn, and they're like, hey, we can help you with your funnels and all that stuff. Uh, and I looked at their website, and it was like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the 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 tables, the frames, like when we just started there. Now, like really, so. What can you teach me about websites and messaging if yours looks horrible and, you know, filled right. up with all that stuff and I don't even know where to click. So the first the first place is, um, like you say, look good, <laughs> right? Look like someone who knows what they're talking about. Have some presence um, and be visible. And so we talked about two things, authority and visibility, sure. right? Or did I miss yep. something? Yeah, authority and visibility. No, no, you got Okay. And and the the last one is um, so identity and visibility are the first two. Then the last one is authority. And what that means is is do people see you as an authority in your space? Um, when you're not seen as an authority, uh, you're um, you're exhausting yourself trying to chase down leads. You're competing on price. Uh, you're um, you know you're just you're just one more person that somebody's getting a, a proposal from and likely never going to hear from again, as opposed to, I need to work with them. Like, like when you're somebody that let's not even call anybody else, let's call this person because we know they're going to kill it. We know that this is what they do. They're the best of the best. And then if they can't afford you, maybe they'll go somewhere else, but they're always going to start with you. And if you're within their budget, then it's not even worth talking to somebody else. So that's when you know you're an authority where you've really kind of broken the mold. Uh, in terms of uh, you know, in terms of positioning yourself, where when somebody wants the best, you're just the you're the person that's showing up uh, on on TV. Uh, you're the person that's being interviewed on the on the podcast or on or on the radio. Um, you're showing up in Forbes or Inc. magazine. You're 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 seen as as that authority. And uh, Paul is saying, I focused on branding right away when I started my business 15 years ago, and to be honest, it was really because I did not like selling. So I was looking for a way to attract sales without pitching. I did pretty well because I understood that that was my brand. I'm still working on that selling thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, 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 like it, it really does. It does help in the selling process because people feel like they know you. Um, they know that you're, you, know, you don't have to prove yourself as much as when you're selling. When you're selling, you don't, you know, when you have a strong brand, you don't have to do the hard sell. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to back people into a corner and beat them into submission. Uh, you know, because people want to buy what you have, you know. So you're like saying my like is... skills are not going to work. <laughs> yeah, like when's when's the last time you saw J.K. Rowling on like you know on, on a TV show like Hawking Books? Like, like right. it, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> like she doesn't have to. Like you know, now, I mean, if she wants to go in for an interview, it's probably because she really wants to, not because she has to. 
So we have a question from Paul. He says, hey, can you ask Mark to talk more about competing on price? That is a major issue in my profession. So Paul, hop on over, I'm that geek.com forward slash live, and you can have that face-to-face -face conversation instead of me being in the middle. Um, but I'll tell you, it was funny because I, I had that experience you're talking about, Mark. Uh, when I was the G plus go to gal, I had a guy go to Google, put Google plus expert, my name came up first, called me and said, okay, $5,000 a month, I want you to do that stuff. And I was like, right. uh, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, and, and and that's and that's a game changer for a yeah. business when when you're not when, when you don't have to spend so much time uh, chasing leads or or uh, you know um, uh, prospecting and going to networking events yeah. and and uh, you know joining associations and all that because you know you just have a steady flow of business like that's how you can really focus in on growing the business as opposed to uh, just you know desperately trying to pay the bills. Right. So uh, authority, visibility, and number three is? Well, identity, visibility, and authority. Identity, visibility, and authority. Um, so can you share, just because I know a few people here are visual, let's share your uh, sure. infographic of how that works. And Paul, I I'm expecting you pictures. to hop on this, in with us. <laughs> this, would be the, this would be the visibility portion of the program. The visibility the program. portion of the program, yes. <laughs> uh, let's see, so here we go. There you go. I, yeah, I can see it. You see it? Good. Yep. All right. So um, let's see. We can hide that little thingy. Uh, let me make it a little bigger. So, so the idea is that um, you have these three aspects of this brand. Let me. Can you see the whole thing? Yep. Mostly. Yeah. There we go. Yep. Message on the top. Yep. Okay. So, so you have these three aspects of this personal brand: so identity, visibility, and authority, and. Uh, and within each one are these different sections. So within your identity, it's what's your position? How are you positioning yourself? This is this is kind of that internal uh, aspect of who you are. Uh, because, you know, once you know who you are, what your mission is, what your you know what your um, what you stand for, um, and then you know how to communicate it to everybody else. And that's where your message comes in. And your message is you know who's that market that you're trying to reach? What's the problem that they have? How do you solve that problem differently from everybody else? And then your story is what wraps it all together. We love stories. Yes. Um, we connect with stories. I know you had Clint on, what was it, last week? Um, talking yep. about Clinton, uh, stories. Uh, yeah, Clinton Young. And, and, uh, and Clinton is just, is, is, is brilliant with this stuff. Like it's, it's it, you know, it's, it's um, your story is so important. And we, a lot of times we belittle story because, you know, we don't see as much of a value in it, but it really is what connects the dots. Um, your story is what, is, is, is what, um, makes it possible for you to stand here doing what you do uh you know it's it's that it's that idea that you know in my case my story my origin story is about working on broadway uh, i was and, and and i don't joke when i'm saying i was completely unqualified i was completely unqualified <laughs> i just got out of college i had no experience uh, i had never even been to a broadway show before but i heard that it paid well and i lived in my mom's basement like that was my criteria for i should get a job on broadway which is completely <laughs> ridiculous but um, you know, but a year and a half later, after really kind of pushing, and uh, and I built a brand for myself. I created a logo. This is 1996, so there was no personal branding, and all we had were AOL discs at the time. Uh, but I built a logo. I, I created a logo for myself, and I put it everywhere. I gave out demo tapes. I figured out who I was talking to. I learned what they needed most, and what they needed, what they really needed was, you know, as musicians, they wanted notoriety. They wanted a pat on the back for the gig that they had. They didn't need me as a sub as much as they needed me as uh, somebody that can help them. And so I got a job writing for a big music magazine at the time. And I started interviewing all the musicians and, and just like we do now, like there were no yeah. blogs, but I was, you know, I was writing for a major magazine about what it was like to work on Broadway and interviewing all the Broadway musicians. And then I became friends with them. And then they started to need me as much as I needed uh, them, if not more. And, uh, and that's how I kind of got my in. And it's just this long you know, story, but it was, when you look at it, it was all personal branding. It was, it was being clear on what my message was. It was making sure I was in all the right places at the right time, having the logo, having the look and everything else. And then seeing myself as an authority by being a writer for the magazine. It was, mm -hmm. it, it was all identity, visibility and authority. And, and that story allows me to do what I do uh, you know, now. Um, your visibility is your presence. It, it's everything from you know uh, how you show up in a room when you walk in. Uh, are you dressed the part? You know, if you're, if if you're going to uh, see a dentist, and the guy walks in the room with with like an old Motley Crue T-shirt, you know, with a spaghetti stain on it, 
um, you know, in ripped jeans, like you're not going to let that guy put his hands in your mouth, like, you know, because you're going to do a you U-turn have, and leave. <laughs> yeah. Like we, we have like a certain idea of what things should look like. And in the yeah. same respect, if a guy shows up, um, you know, to, to mow your lawn and he's wearing a three piece suit, you're probably not going to want to hire him either because yeah. something seems shifty. Like, like, so, so we do judge a book by its cover. Presence is important. And that includes not just what you wear when you walk into a room, but what you're wearing out in on the internet that means your logo that means um uh you know all, all your different assets your website the the design the look the colors the font uh you know the, those even down to like the icons like how does it all how does it all uh consistently represent who you are and what you stand for mm -hmm. uh, and then of course your network and making sure that 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 carries over and then you're communicating that message to everybody else through through your network facebook and twitter and LinkedIn and wherever else you like to play around. And then the last piece is authority. And uh, that's, that's now, you know, positioning yourself with content, like what you're doing now is authority. You're positioning yourself in, in a place of authority by uh, having the show, giving this interview and, and, uh, and, and everything else that you're doing, you're putting content out. Uh, and that could be visual content, like, like a, uh, like a video, it could be uh, written content, like a blog. It could be long form posts on Facebook. It could be audit, you know, uh, uh, auditory. Whatever your method of delivery is, is irrelevant. It's that you're putting out good content. Um, it's monetizing your brand. At the end of the day, like if this is a hobby, great. But if it's not, you got to figure out how to make money on it. Because not only because you need to, you know, fund this thing that you're doing and your your lifestyle, but we see um, authority in in monetization when somebody's charging for something um it's a whole different story than when somebody's doing it for free yeah uh you know if somebody's doing it for free as a favor it's like it's it seems like it's a hobby like why would you do this for free if it was if it was more than a, yeah. uh, a hobby so so monetization monetization stands for authority and then influence being interviewed by the you know by uh cnn or cnbc or you know showing up in, in ink magazine all those kind of things so the thing that where this gets really interesting is that, like I said, we only focus on one or two of these. So when you know, oh, and you can you can break these down even further uh, down from your position, message, story, to all these different uh, aspects that that you can kind of solve. And and I'll give um, or if I will give a a way for everybody to download this. So yep. don't furiously start taking screenshots and stuff like that. <laughs> like uh, she'll she'll you know share that with you. Um, but, uh, but what we do is like when we focus on just identity and visibility, um, your results are you're going to limit your income because you're not seen as the authority. So what ends up happening is you're competing on price because everybody does what you do. So you're just another person that does what, what you do. Uh, and, and so there's really no value in it. Like you're not going to do it any differently than anybody else. Um, when you just focus on visibility and authority, there's this limited understanding. Like I like him. He seems like he really knows what he's talking about. Uh, you know, he was he was out there as a speaker or an author, or like someone who of authority. I'm just not quite sure what he does or what she does, or and how to actually hire them. Uh, and so there's this limited understanding because there's no identity, no clear identity. And then then the last one is um, when you focus on just authority and identity, and you're you're uh, and and you're not spending time putting it out there. You're not spending time on your social media channels or your website or uh, or having a clear uh, vis you know, visible uh, identity out in the world, uh, then you limit your impact. Basically, what you're doing is you're just reaching your, you know, close circle of friends. Like, you know, you're not extending outside of that circle uh, because there's no, there's no way to do that. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, I really like who you are and what you have to say. Um, I love the book that you wrote. And, you know, so you're clearly an authority, but there's no website for me to share with anybody or there's no uh, you don't have a Facebook page, so I don't know how to share you with the people in my world. So now you're so so I won't, and now you're just stuck with it within your that limited circle that you currently have. So so that's where kind of that assessment comes in. You take this assessment, you're going to find out where you know where your results are showing up, where, like where those weaknesses are, um, and what you need to patch up, like what you know where you need to spend some time. Do I need to spend more time? On visibility? Do I need to spend more time on my authority? Do I need to spend more time on my identity? Like, where do I need to put my attention in order to grow this thing and actually get some traction? I love that. And so this is super visual and it's very, very helpful. And let's talk about like actually diving a little bit deeper into each and every one of them. So, you know, the story is um, visibility. Do I need to be everywhere for people to see me? Do I need to spend some ads? 
um, how do I boost my visibility in Mark and Science world? Um, you need to, you, you basically need to be where the people that you serve are. Like, who is your community? So, like I said, if, you know, looking back at, at our cupcakepreneur. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. It, it, <laughs> you you know, I have like, this little image of a little, you know, pinkish little cupcake right. with some vanilla frosting and a little hat, like a story hat. That's right, hat. right. <laughs> So, so, but, but if, when you, um, you know, so when you, when, when, uh, you look at that example, um, in the case of the one that wants to, you know, the person that just wants to have the little bake shop and be the local celebrity in their town, do they need to be on Facebook? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, if they have a, a loud enough presence in their town, depending on the size of their town, but really all the people that they want to reach is within a five square mile, you know, right. radius. Yeah, so you need enough. to reach them. Um, you know, being on Twitter, that's probably not going to sell a ton of cupcakes. Um, you know, so I, I don't, it's, it's probably not the best place for you to spend all of your time. Now, if you want to show up on all the TV shows and, and every, and, and all that other stuff, um, then that's a little bit different. Uh, you, you know, th at that point you want to, uh, you, you know, you want to show up in, in all those places because that's where all those places, all those people are hanging out. Like it. So let's uh, let's talk about what um, Paul was asking. How do you? Let's talk about the competing on price. How do you not compete on price? Uh, that's by by being seen as an authority. Like that is the number one thing. Like 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 it. You know, if if um if you're not clear on who you are, you're probably not competing at all. So it's not even a matter of price. Um. So so if you're clear on who you are, uh, then you know it's not that. It's really when you're seen as an authority that that you're not competing on price so if if um you know if if uh you could choose any coach on the planet uh you know to to, to help you get to where you want to go um and it wasn't about money it was just you had unlimited funds you can hire any coach that you want uh would you choose the um you know some 21 year old kid that just graduated college that that uh you know as your coach or would you choose tony robbins yeah um, you probably choose Tony Rye. He's he's the authority in the space. He's got all the years. He's been he's been on all the interviews. Everybody sees him as an authority. He's written all the books, um, and and so uh, you know who's going to charge more? Tony Robbins. Who's going to get the seven figure you know a year uh, payouts? Tony Robbins. Like it's not going to you know the other not now the other kid uh, the twenty one year old the other kid I'm getting old <laughs> uh, the the, the twenty one year old is uh, now he may be brilliant. Uh, and and uh, and may even be a better coach than Tony. Like you know, you don't know. But Tony has the authority, and he's got the name recognition. He's got he's 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 got all the stuff backing up. Uh, you know who what he says he can do uh, versus mo you know most other people. And let's talk about that too as well, right? Because sometimes being too cheap is actually hurting you, right? It's uh, like say you're gonna go to um, God forbid you need a heart surgery. And uh, you go to one doctor and says, you know, it's just $500. You're going to be like, uh, <laughs> I don't trust right. that doctor with, you know, I can, like, it's not about the price, right? It's about like, why is it so cheap? What's the catch? Is he going to kill me? Does he clean his, you know, his stuff? He's like the back rooms or something. So price is a very interesting um, idea, right? Because it kind of puts the value on what you're doing. And if the value is there, then price is not an issue, but you really have to prove that the value is there, right? Yeah, and it's not just being, it's not just saying that you're gonna do something, it's being able to prove that you've done it or that yeah. or you have the authority to do it. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I can, I can uh, open up, a, you know, put an ad in the newspaper and send a bunch of people to my, to my office right now and, uh, and, and charge $1,000 or $10,000 or $100,000 for um, a root canal. It doesn't mean that people are actually going to, to pay me to do it because I have no authority in the space. There's, yeah. I have no right sticking my hands in anybody else's mouth. It's just, it's just <laughs> not where they belong. So, uh, you know, it, and it's the same is true for you. Like if you don't have the experience to back up the thing that you say you're gonna do or that you can do, like it's great that you, that you can do it, but you have to build up some of that authority. You have to prove that you're able to do this, uh, and and that you know that that you are an important figure in that industry. Otherwise, you know your only other option is let me do it for free or let me do it for cheap, so I can build up some some of my base, so I can get some of that experience. Which is nothing wrong with that. Like we've all started, you know, we've all done our stuff for free uh, or for really cheap in order to start our businesses. 
Um, but uh, but at some point you have to grow up from that. And, and that's again, that's where that authority comes in. So let me ask you about, you know, some of the trends that I'm seeing uh, where we're moving because of privacy issues and because of a lot of fake stuff that's happening online and the lack of trust that so many of, many of us have. Uh, a lot of conversations are moving from the public to the private. Right. So how would you uh, and then it becomes word of mouth. And I don't know if you're using that or not, but a lot of international uh, outside of the US, many people use WhatsApp and they have WhatsApp in groups. And so now instead of going to Google and saying, hey, I need a plumber, they go to the WhatsApp group and they say, anyone here knows a plumber. And then, you know, you go based on referrals. Before it used to be referrals, write and reviews online, Google reviews, Yelp, all that stuff. Now we're moving a little bit more into the private realm. So uh, Telegram, WhatsApp, different, different texting messages, applications. So how, um, how would someone become that person who's being recommended um, in those private groups? I'm thinking there's a combination of authority and visibility and stuff like that, but I don't know if you have some kind of like a, let's say a little hack or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't know if it's, it, it, I mean, it really is the same formula. In order for you to show up in, in, uh, in those conversations, uh, people have to recognize uh, that, that you are, uh this uh leader within the industry like you like like you know you you're you're the one that's getting chosen for all these jobs you're the one that's getting hired you're the one that people are talking about and so when it does come time for for um uh you know hey does anybody have a plumber like oh yeah you got to call this guy because uh absolutely amazing you know and uh and and they approach it differently than everybody else and you know like like it becomes like, like all those elements that you've built within your brand become the talking points that people use because you've guided the conversation in that way. Like it. So you do need to have visibility in the circles that you want to be known as the authority of. And let's just break it down for a little bit like, okay, step one, do this. Step two, do this. Like step one, do you have a website? Step two, do you decide who your audience is? Step you know, or step one, do you decide who the audience is? And then step two, you build a website. Like what would be the roadmap to get started with building an authority or being chosen? So, so it, it, it kind of depends on where you're at. So if you're starting from nothing, if you just woke up this morning, you're, you know, you're, you're a fetus and you're looking to build a personal <laughs> brand, you start at the beginning. You just you start disconnected the umbilical cord and now you're like, oh, I want to make some money. <laughs> That's right, right. Well, it, you know, it's, it seems like it's becoming, it's going in that direction. Um, but, uh, you know, that's that's one thing. But we all have some form of brand already out there. We all have, like, there's very few people that, that are just like, hey, clean slate. I got nothing. Uh, so I don't even, you know, in, in which case you have to start in, in the beginning, which is your identity. But like in the case, uh, in, in most cases, the first thing is, is um, like any other you know, kind of goal that you're trying to reach, you got to get clear about where you are and you have to be clear about where you're going. So uh, I need to know if I'm looking at a map, I need to know that I'm starting here in order, for, you know, and then I have to know where, you know, I want to go. Like if I want to, you know, if I want to drive to California, um, you know, how am I going to get there if I don't know where I'm starting from, if I'm looking at a map? Now I'm not looking at GPS, obviously, but like if I don't know where I am, uh, there's no way I'm going to get to where I want to go. I got to be clear on where I am and uh, and, and where I want to go in order to determine what that next step is. Uh, and then once you get there, then you kind of determine like, okay, so I know that I'm here. I'm weak in these different areas. And uh, and I know that I want to be infamous in the cupcake world. And so uh, <laughs> in order to get there, I need to, you know, I need a website. So, okay, so let's let's look at that. Um, I also need a brand. I need a good logo. I need a color scheme. I need fonts. I need um, I need good headshots. I need pictures of my product. I need to you know I need to be clear about who my target market is. Who am I selling to? Who really loves cupcakes that much? Um, I need to you know okay. So now I got that. Like what shows or what places can I be interviewed by to be seen as an authority? Maybe if I won Cupcake Wars, that would just blow my business out of the water. So that becomes my goal. I have a 12 month goal of getting on the show Cupcake Wars, and that's going to become uh, my, my authority piece. And, you know, and you start to build out all these different pieces along the way, but it really starts like it has to start with, you know, where am I now? Where do I want to go? Yes. Um, so, guys, if you don't know where you are right now, guess what? 
there's a there's an app for that <laughs> it's not really an app but you can start there and thank you Alison for tagging uh, Lisa and Lori hopefully you guys can uh, watch the replay because we are about done and hop on in to I'm that geek that com forward slash live you'll get this assessment um, and you can know where you are right now which is a great way to know what you need to focus on to where you want to go and I love that you said you need to know where you want to go because otherwise how are you going to sure. get there right um, and I think a lot of people are kind of confused with the destination. Like, do I want to become, like you said, celebrity, like Hollywood famous? Do I want to be locally famous? Do I have a monetary uh, amount that I want to make? Do I have so many clients? Do I need to, right? So all that stuff you have to kind of figure out before you even embark on the personal branding journey. Because otherwise you might be chosen, but for the wrong stuff. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, exactly. You, or you might just head down that down a path that that um, you know you spend a year writing a book, only to realize that you hate writing and, and or your audience doesn't like to read. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and so now you've written a book for people that genuinely don't care, uh, um, or you know, or you've written a book for and and uh, and you hate writing, or you've you've uh, you know started down the career as a speaker only to find out that you don't like being in front of people. So, so you want to be clear on what this thing looks like, because like, like when I, when I look back at the Broadway thing, um, you know, after college, like I decided that I was going to be on that Broadway stage. I didn't know exactly what show. I didn't know how it was going to happen. I didn't know, um, you know, I didn't know how to get there. I didn't know who I needed to talk to, but I knew what the outcome was. I know that I'm here. I know I don't have enough experience. I know I don't, uh, you know, I don't know uh, enough people to get there. So I know where I am right now and I know where I'm lacking. And I also know uh, where I want to go. Uh, and so now I just need to start filling in the gap. Like what roads are going to take me there? And so, you know, I would reach out to everybody and I would I would take people out to dinner and I would stalk them and I'd, you know, get the restraining orders and all <laughs> the other stuff. Like, you know, and then, and then after a while you start to realize, okay, I'm on the wrong path. Like I'm not getting the outcome that I want. What else do I need? Well, let me take a look at it. And, and so then you notice that like, well, yeah, you know what? Bass players, you know, want to be like, like they, they want to be acknowledged for the work that they're doing. Like, you know, you, as a musician, bass players, like the last guy at the party, you know, like that to get, <laughs> you know, to be noticed. So, uh, so let me be the guy that shines the, the spotlight on the bass player. And I'm going to get a you know, gig writing for this magazine and I'm going to, and I'm going to uh, write about these bass players. And, and so, so I took a different path and, you know, all with the outcome, like I didn't want to be a writer. I never wrote anything. I, I graduated from, I, mean, I, I passed uh, English uh, as a favor for my teacher because I was, <laughs> I was horrible. Um, and now but, look at you, you're crashing like Instagram with jokes. What is that? <laughs> uh, but, but like I, I, I wrote that, that those articles just for the sheer, you know, just to get in and, you know, to get on their good graces, to get, no, you know, to, to get, to get in the same room and interview them and ask them all the questions I wanted to ask. And, uh, and that led to uh, ultimately getting the gig. Like that one thing was where it all really, really started. Um, if I didn't, if I didn't know Chris, if I didn't have a crystal clear vision of where I was and what I needed to do in order to get to where I wanted to go, uh, I don't think I could have gotten there. Like it just, it, it was just too big of a task. Uh, and there was too many things in the way. I had too many people telling me it was not possible. I had too many people telling me to give it up. Uh, and I put in enough effort that if had I given up, nobody would have blamed me because I, I, I really put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into that thing. And uh, and yet being that crystal clear, knowing that, like, I know I'm just one yes away from making this happen yeah. uh, and, and just visualizing myself on that stage played a big role in just getting past all that. I love that. So let's uh, let's finish up with uh, one of the things that uh, you have on your wall and it's uh, be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> so can we uh, so guys let me let me just reel you in into that um, when uh, Mark and I first had a conversation off uh, off air uh, right behind him there's a sign that says be a dick and I'm like really I moved it too what did I say I did that for you I moved it I didn't you want moved, to yeah you it. did move it and I was like where's that sign um, so now it's a bass player over there but right behind him there was like be a dick and finally a word that I can pronounce you know without messing it up <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, let's end with that story because it's such a beautiful story that uh, connects a lot of the things that you're talking about. Where it's you know, um, it's the relationship, it's being known, it's knowing who you are, it's you know, um, it's uh, it's being visible to the people around you. So 
Uh, let's sum up with that. Sure. So, so uh, it's it's definitely one of my favorite stories uh, to tell, and, and I'll and I'll do it pretty quickly. But but um, when uh, a, a bunch of years ago, about six or seven years ago, I used to live in New Jersey, and I grew up in New Jersey, and I had this idea that I was going to you know, change the world, and uh, not only was I going to change the world, like as this little kid with snap on cape and the whole thing. But I convinced myself that, like, if somebody's going to change the world, I, I kind of feel like they're not going to be from New Jersey. Like, I don't know why, like, but I just feel like they would come from someplace other than New Jersey. So wait, wait, and, wait, Tony Soprano, the, not, not the guy who's going to change the world? I, I don't, like, like it, it, you know, and maybe we all feel about that, about our, our hometown, because you know the people and you're like, there's no way that these people yeah. would change the world. Uh, so, so I figured that, that like, you know, I, I got to get out of New Jersey. And so I moved to Boston and I traveled around the world for, you know, for a bunch of years went on the road and, and did all this great stuff and then i i you know i ended up meeting a girl moving back to new jersey and like i was I, like you could throw a rock out of my bedroom window and you would hit people that i went to high school with so like <laughs> yeah. that's how close i was to like you know like like the guy that was never going to come back yeah. like came back with a vengeance like i should have just moved back into my you know my, my parents house and and uh and so like it was it was right around that midlife crisis time of like you know i was 40 or something or 39 and and um and I, I it just hit me like all at once that like wow like what have i done like what you know why am i here uh, i don't want to be in new jersey we should move and i convinced my family to move and uh, so we sold all of our stuff we sold the house put everything that was left in a truck and we drove it down to uh, tampa florida sight unseen i love the gulf coast so it was like we should live in tampa uh, and that was that like we threw a dart at a map and landed and ended up here and um And so as my wife is unpacking everything, I now have a panic attack. Like, oh my God, what have I done? Like, I sold everything. Like, <laughs> like why, would I, why would somebody do this? Like, this is not normal. And, and so uh, she convinced me to, uh, to go for a walk and take a breather and, and, uh, and get out of the house because it was driving her crazy. And I took the kids with me just to make sure I wouldn't run away. And uh, we were walking around the neighborhood. And I met this gentleman who lives, you know, seven or eight houses down the street from me. And, uh, uh, you know, mid 60s um, and just one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life, uh, just just so generous to my children and, and to me and so giving and humble. And, um, you know, he, he you, you go into his house and he's got a dozen Emmys on the on the wall, um, you know, for, and, but, you know, you ask him about it. And he just kind of poo-poo's it like, ah, oh, that's just something that I used to do. And um, and and so uh, he, he just he just was was this this welcome wagon in my life at the at the time when I needed it the most and he was he just was uh, um, just such an inspiration to me that we became really good friends and uh, every time I saw him walk his dog I I would run outside and 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 uh, you know with my dog and we'd go walk our dogs together. And, uh, and, and so, and that was, that was my neighbor, Dick and, uh, just this extraordinary guy. And so one day, uh, a month and a half after we moved there, it's my birthday and he shows up at my house and he hands me a baseball with a bunch of autographs on it. And he had found out, you know, just through our conversations that I was a Red Sox fan. And so he had, um, a bunch of, uh, a retired Red Sox players sign a baseball to me as a gift. And he said, you know, look, I know you're in a new, new area. You don't have any family to, to celebrate your birthday with. So here's, here's a gift for you and, and it'd make you feel welcome. And like, that was it. And so I went into my office and, and like, I, you know, I was all teared up and I, I wrote a blog post called from now on, I'm going to be a dick to everybody I meet online. <laughs> and uh, that post went viral and hit like, you know, got like a couple hundred thousand views over the course of a couple of days. And it became this kind of swan song <laughs> that I just you know, like, like I had this be a, be a dick movement where I, you know, I just I, I changed the way I lived my life because of this this one guy, and um and, and it really got me to 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 understand that you don't have to do these extraordinary things to make uh um you know to make an impact in the world like I you know I have a uh, we both have a mutual friend. That, that has built an orphanage uh, in the Dominican Republic and does these amazing things. And it's so intimidating to be around somebody that's, that's changing the world to that level that you start to feel like, well, what could I possibly do? Right. You know, I have a friend that walked from Florida to California um, and, and raised money for a great cause and like, good for you, but I can't do that. Like that's, I have, I have a family, not too many, like, yeah. you know, so, so we end up doing nothing. 
And, uh, and what I learned from my neighbor, Dick, was that like, it doesn't take a lot to, to make a difference. It's, it's welcoming the new neighbor. It's, uh, you know, it's help. It's, it's feeding the elderly couple that lives down the street. It's, um, you know, it's doing these little things that, that make the big difference. Uh, and, and so, so I started, you know, kind of gathering a lot of stories of people that are, you know, really changing the world by, by doing these little things. There's a guy in, uh, what is he in? I think he's in Iowa. Um, that every day he buys a box of chocolate bars and hands them out to all the, all the people around town. And he's become like a legend. He's in his nineties. Um, you know, it's little things like that, that make these huge differences in, you know, in our communities and in the world. Uh, and so, so that, so I have this kind of thing and I, and I keep it now it's, I'm facing it. So, so I don't offend anybody, I, you know, cause nobody ever knows what it means. And I think I'm kind of a jerk, but, uh, but be a dick to me means like, you know, always look for that one thing that I can do that can give back to the people around me. And you know, if, uh, in, in business, so I'm just going to wrap it up. Uh, this is kind of like what you're saying, find the thing that is opposite to what everybody else is doing and do right. more of that, right? Most of us are very transactional. It's like, hey, what do I get out of this? Uh, but if you can be a dick and do something that's nice for someone without the transaction, uh, guess what? All the other stuff <laughs> will start coming up, right? You'll be the chosen one by default because nobody does that. Um, so Mark, thank you so much for, uh, for sharing like the visuals and the stories and the path to becoming chosen. Guys, if you wanna know where you are right now, there you go, right there. Uh, download the assessment and let's see, can you beat me? Of course you can. <laughs> let's see if you can get more than 78. And uh, if you do, fantastic. And if not, here's the, here's the cool thing. After you take that assessment, Mark, you're giving them like a step-by-step, -step, right? Like a breakdown of exactly what they need to work on in order to improve where they are with their personal brand, right? Right, so it's, it's not just a matter of having the score. Like the score is good to give you kind of a temperature of where you are, but um, with the score in each of these different categories, it's going to give you very specific things that you can do right now in order to lift your score up to, you know, kind of that next level. And then you can take the test again. You can keep doing, you can keep repeating it. But, um, but it's, it's very personalized, very specific, um, uh, you know, um, to do's and, and like, like action steps, the strategies that you can actually implement right now. So, and you can do that guys on your own. So just take that. You can see exactly where you need to focus on uh, your visibility, your identity, your authority, and then just start tackling one thing at a time, um, and then you'll get there. Um, so, Mark, where do we find you? Online, on Facebook, Big Mouse? Sure. <laughs> big Mouse. No. The first one was Loud, it was loud Mouse. Loud, loud Mouse. It was loud Mouth. mouth. Loud, big Mouse. <laughs> No, no, you know I, why? Because you're the big cheese at Loudmouth. That's why I combined both of them. All right, I'll, I'll give that one. To you then. Uh, yeah, so so my, my personal site is markensign.com, M-A-R-C-E-N-S-I-G-N.com. And uh, my agency is, uh, we're, you know, we do personal branding for speakers, authors, coaches, entrepreneurs, and it's Loudmouth, L-O-U-D-M-O-U-S-E.com. Fantastic. So uh, thank you guys for watching us, commenting and interacting. Uh, Paul, I hope you feel better. Alison, I hope Lisa and uh, Lori were getting some value out of that. Um, and if you have any questions, any comments, anything like that, you know where to put them. And we'll see you guys on next episode of I'm that Thanks, Mark. Yep, you got it.